Hello, my name is Jay Renee Williams, and I am a Senior Training Specialist for CAP Tulsa. Hello, my name is Adriana Nichols, and I'm a Family Engagement Specialist for CAP Tulsa. Thank you all for joining us as we try something new and unique to kick off the school year. We are excited that you have taken the time out of your busy schedules to join us. CAP Tulsa would not be the same without our families. They are the core of our work, both at our schools and learning at home program, as well as in our programming for families. If you're a newly enrolled family, we welcome you and look forward to collaborating with you on your goals and your child's full development. If you're a returning family, we welcome you back. At CAP Tulsa, family engagement is a shared responsibility of CAP Tulsa staff and families that fosters mutual respect for the roles and strengths each has to offer. This partnership is designed to support you as you work toward your goals and creating a great future for your family. We know last year was an odd school year and challenging for many families, but we are excited to welcome you back into our buildings. We look forward to engaging with you in multiple ways and through different opportunities through our schools, learning at home, and family programming. Active engagement with your child, their school, and their learning is one of the biggest predictors of your child's long-term school success. We encourage you to participate in events at your school, whether it be family or group connections, first five years, or family conferences. These are great ways to meet other parents and learn new ways to support your child's growth and development. One of the things we're most excited about is welcoming you back into our in-person first five years classes. These sessions are an excellent way to not only meet other parents, but also to build a strong foundation for your child and to better understand your strengths as a parent and what makes you shine. And this year, we want all of our families to shine. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce the keynote speakers, Kim and Jason Katecki. Kim and Jason are best friends husband and wife, parents of three kids, entrepreneurs, authors, retro t-shirt wearers, and partners in crime on a crusade to annihilate adult-itis in themselves and the world. Kim is a former kindergarten teacher and a lover of all things whimsical. Jason is an artist, author, and speaker. He enjoys Star Wars, soft t-shirts, and brand new tubes of paint. Kim and Jason are the creators of Escape Adulthood, a company on a mission to help people eradicate adult-itis by offering real-world strategies, practical ideas, and permission to create a life filled with adventure, meaning, and joy. Greetings, greetings. It is amazing to be with you. Yes. Wow. Thank you for joining us. We are very excited to spend a little time with you and shenanigate for the next 45 minutes or so. And, and speaking of 45 minutes, we know that most parents cannot sit down and watch anything for 45 minutes. I don't think it has anything to do with the parents, Kim. I think they could, they'd be happy to sit down for 45 minutes. You may Maybe have some a other few distractions among, you know, little distractions, but long story short, this is an invitation to push pause at any time. That's the joy of this virtual world is, you know, come back to this if you get interrupted. Um, this is here as a resource and Cap Tulsa wants this to be able to be available to you whenever you can access it. Can they watch it again too. They can watch it again. Wow. Yes. <laughs> they can binge it several times. <laughs> but it's pretty exciting. As you know, and you're kind of seeing probably throughout the different communication, you know, the, the theme this year is shine on. And what a perfect theme for parents, for our whole world right now, who just needs some more light. I think we're ready. I we're, think ready we're ready to, shine. to get some light. We're ready to shine on. Yeah. Right. And we're ready for some fun. So thanks for being here. Yeah. So we uh, we had a chance to uh, be with the staff too. And yes. Yes. So this whole theme of Shine On is integrated throughout all of Cap Tulsa right now with 
with the staff, um, getting a chance to work with them has been fun as well. Um, so hopefully this, this will inspire you to bring a little bit more light into your home, into your workplaces, you know, out in the community. Um, the more light, the better. Yep. And we, uh, we have a couple promises. We are going to keep things light. We are going to jam this <laughs> next 45 minutes with ideas for having fun and as Kim said, shenanigating yes. and we're going to have a laugh or two along the way. So we are glad that you are with us and we're going to start out with a story because we're from Wisconsin and you may have heard we have cheese here. We have a lot of cheese, which means we eat grilled cheese for lunch quite a bit. In fact, we had it this week. Yes, we? Yes, we yes, we <laughs> so there's a day when our, so we have three kids um, as, as was introduced. And when our 12 year old was three, she was in the kitchen with us and she always wanted to help. Right. Yeah. They all do, which is a great place to integrate, you know, that kind of learning about food and healthy eating. And so she wanted to eat or she wanted to eat lunch and have grilled cheese. So we got the butter out, got our little butter knife that was, you know, not sharp. And we like, I said, you know, go ahead and butter the bread. It's really fun. It's really easy. She actually loved doing it. But I said, do you do just butter one side? Because we didn't need both sides of the bread buttered, right? And she did. <laughs> she buttered one side. <laughs> she nailed it, right? I mean, come on. We were not expecting that. Have you <laughs> no. ever had a moment where you tell your child uh, or maybe your spouse or partner like, something that you think the directions are very clear and they come back not quite how you intended, right? This is one of those examples. But we share this example because it's a really good example for us grownups that yeah. like, if you're watching this, I'm sure you weren't expecting to see this way of doing things. And that's sort of the problem with us grownups is we get so caught in yeah. doing things a certain way that in order to really shine on, we have to be willing to, to change the way we see and look at things with fresh eyes, just like, just like kids do. I know. That's one of my favorite things about having kids is having these little, we call them Sherpas, like little guides um, to kind of help us remember a different way of seeing things, mm -hmm. right? It can be very valuable when mm -hmm. it comes to that. It's sort of like uh, in the spring and summertime, if you look out your window and you are a typical adult and you see this, you might be a little panicked. Yeah, there's a lot of weeds taking over the yard. Right? Might be freaking out a little bit. But if you are three, four, or five years old, you see something different. You see wishes. Yeah. Flowers for mom, hours of fun, right? Here's the thing. Both are true. They are weeds and they are wishes. And here's the cool thing about uh, being an adult. Uh, is sometimes it's it's there's not a lot of cool things I would about like being to an hear adult. What is cool about being an adult? One of the cool things is that we have the choice to see circumstances how we'd like to. We can we can choose to see ourselves as victims, or we can see ourselves as victors. We can see this as weeds, or we can see it as wishes. The choice is ours, which is which is pretty cool and yeah. very powerful. Now a little bit of bad news. Part we're of the doing reason, so good. Now we got to go backwards? Well, you know, <laughs> part of the reason uh, we have such a hard time of seeing with new eyes is because of an enemy that we're all facing. Yes. And I'm not talking about COVID. I'm not talking about Darth Vader. I'm talking about something even more powerful. This is so powerful. It can turn us from this into this. Oh, boy. Not good. Not great. Uh, we start out young, enthusiastic, full of energy, passion, wonder. And as we get older, sometimes we, we morph into something that looks a little bit more like this. Oh. What, is this what is this enemy that we are fighting, Kim? Uh, it is adult-itis, you guys. Adult-itis. And, you know, you may not have actually heard of this um, yet, so I'm glad you're here. But simply put, it means the swelling of the adult. Whenever you add itis to something, it means swelling of. All right. So that is a pretty like accurate arthritis, arthritis, right? the swelling of the joints. Right. So this is um, pretty accurate because we do kind of take ourselves so seriously and life get, life is serious. There are serious parts of adulthood. But I think over the last few years, we've heard the term adulting is hard. Right. And it's when your the seriousness starts to lead the way. Um, but we do have a little bit more of an official definition. Would yes, you we mind do. giving that? I'd today? be happy to. I am. I have my coffee here. Uh, so, what is the official? Coffee. Hold on, coffee. Oh, parents' best friend. <laughs> coffee. That's what's for breakfast, lunch, and, and dinner. dinner. <laughs> uh, adultitis. What is it? it well, here's the official medical definition. 
A common condition occurring in people between ages of 21 and under 21, marked by chronic illness, mild depression, super high stress level, general fear of change, and in some extreme cases, the inability to smile. On second, make seller, benefits, murder, bills, responsibilities, or a boring work life. Generally, patients with this condition are not fun to be around. <laughs> I'm not cheering for adultitis. I'm cheering because I didn't have to share the definition of adultitis. So you're thank welcome. You for you're welcome. <laughs> now, uh, it is, it is, we, we have fun with it, but it is really, uh, it is no joke. Yeah. Uh, adultitis is serious business, and we actually have an intake that if you were to text ESCAPE to 66866, you will be led to a free intake, 12 questions. Yes. Let you know what stage of stage adultitis one, you have. Stage one, stage two, stage three, or full-blown adultitis. And some of you already are kind of self-diagnosing, aren't you? You're like, ah, I bet I'm at least at stage two, but last year I was at full-blown, mm -hmm. you know? And we do waver in and out. Unfortunately, there is no perfect cure for adultitis. It's kind of like a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's an ongoing process, right? Yes. Uh, however, in the meantime, because, uh, you know, if you want to push play or push pause and <laughs> go take the yeah. intake, you can. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of one of the benefits. But we, uh, if you want to put that off for later, we have some warning signs to look out for. Uh, you know, you might be wondering, oh my gosh, it sounds pretty bad. Do I have it? Well, if you're the type of person whose cell phone has become a body part, that's uh, that's a red flag right there. We get it's so hard connected to, keep these phones to away our from devices. Us. I yes. know, I know. Uh, if this is how you park, I'm yeah, kind of running late. Make it happen. <laughs> we laugh, but how many times do we force things? Yep. because mm -hmm. we're rushed, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, one more. This one is sort of a self diagnosis. Uh, we can't see you right now. Actually, I, I can see you. Oh, that's you. Creepy. I can see. Uh, but, uh, you just have to decide how you react when you see this next picture. All right. What, what are there there's, smiling? there's a is laughing, there giggling, spinning on your keyboard. What's happening in this good region thing. of your face? Nothing is happening there. You probably have adultitis. <laughs> All right. So good, good to know where you, where you stand with a couple of little I wonder little, if any of the parents signs. here have had this happen to them where they turn around and they're like, what is I happening at the kitchen table? I can't imagine that would ever happen. <laughs> Uh, not at all. Uh, so one of the things that we want to uh, encourage you on today is, you know, we all have storms that come through our lives. Sometimes there's smaller things, you know, like a, a car breaks down or we get a flat tire or uh, pipe bursts in our kitchen. You know, those aren't exactly right. uh, small, Do like remember, they don't matter. There was water coming out of our kitchen. So yeah, I don't, pipes, that was not small. I don't mean it's small in that way, but when you compare it to a global pandemic, right. well, it's kind of small, that. right? So right. we have all these storms that periodically blow through all of our lives. Right. And sometimes uh, they can actually bring good things. Sometimes they can bring sprinkles. Um, and it's up to us to decide what are we going to focus on? Are we going to focus on the negativity, the destruction, the, the rain, or are we going to focus on the silver linings? Um, and again, it, it, there might be pain and destruction and bad things, but there are also good things. And that's why the power to be able to choose what we look at is so important. Um, people who uh, see silver linings are very simply the ones who are looking for them. So we had a good example of this a few years ago where we had a little bit of a leak in our basement, right? Oh, yes. Every time it rained, which was, it was spring. So here in Wisconsin, it was raining a lot. The, the carpet was getting wet and we had three little kids at the time. We're like, oh no, what's happening? Like, we don't have the finances for this. And what if there's mold and all the things that happens with water, right? Uh, what, we don't have time. We don't have time <laughs> to manage this. And so it went on for quite a while until finally you get kind of to a breaking point where you're like, all right, we got to figure this out. So Jason's dad came in and we pulled up the car. It was a mess. We pulled out the paneling or pulled back the paneling. And yeah, there was a little hairline crack. Wasn't that scary, actually, once we saw it. Um, it sure scared it. us for months and months ahead of time as we Isn't imagined worst case scenarios, right? Yes, that fear, false evidence appearing real, right? When you focus on something that isn't even true. So yes, there was a crack. Yes, there was water, but it was fixable. And Jason's dad helped us do that. Um, but then the basement was a mess, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, honestly, when the, the cart was pulled up, there's nails and um, it was gross. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And uh, we were kind of freaked out about it. But eventually we figured out a way to really, I mean, we ended up not even putting carpet back down. 
we ended up doing uh, different things and transformed that space into our favorite room of the house. We created a studio for me and a little a little workspace for you, a little play area for Kim. It turned into our favorite place. Yeah. In fact, it was the first time I could actually make big oil paintings without being afraid of spilling on the carpet. And this uh, this very painting right here was one of the very first ones that I ever made uh, in, in that, that space. space. And I, you know, it's one of those things afterwards I kicked myself because I'm like, we could have had this opportunity sooner. But why didn't we? Oh, because I was too busy. Oh, oh this is terrible. <laughs> this is so unfair. This is going to hey, be the worst. I'm going to defend small. us for a minute. We were busy parents with three young kids. You guys, you get this, right? It's it, Yeah, there's fear, but there's distraction. Sometimes it's distraction, and you just don't have five solid minutes to sit and figure out the answers to a problem. But it did take us... A long time <laughs> to get out of our pity party. It did. Had we done yeah. it sooner by right. choosing to look at it in a different way. And really the question that really served us well is one we want to share with you. Yes. Now that this has happened, what does this make possible? Could this be, would, could we dare to say this is the takeaway you guys today? This Write this big one. down, put it on the refrigerator, put it in your bathroom mirror somewhere because the storms aren't going to stop. You know, this is life. This is how it goes. Um, we're all human and imperfect. So this is part of what this is all going to be. But this question will help you navigate what your next step is. And we need to feel the feels, right? We're mm -hmm. big on that. Feel the feels. Do not deny your feelings. Spend time in that place to process. But then when you're ready to get back up, ask this question and I think it will serve as a guide. Yeah, we almost kind of treat it as a game now. Whenever something bad happens, <laughs> we turn everything into a game. try <laughs> and quickly say, all right, what good can come from this? What does this make possible? And, uh, you know, change of plans. What does that make possible? Uh, it might just be uh, from a from a parenting perspective, it might be this is an opportunity to teach my kids mm. how to react when things don't go their way. Because we've heard that saying like kids, do not listen to what we say. They listen to what we do, Which right? Is scary. <laughs> Which is a little bit scary. So that could that could be the moment. Like this is a moment that I have to teach my kids. This is how we act when we don't get our way. Um, and we there's a lot of there's a lot of grown ups out there that haven't figured out that. So well, it's um, res it's not only resiliency, but it's like tenacity, persistence, right, and attitude. And absolutely. These are all things that when we were teenagers, you know, our parents were telling us, and we're like. You know, but it is really powerful stuff and your kids are watching. So we hope that question serves you. It is certainly continues to serve us to this day. Yeah. And so really, this is all about the idea of seeing with new eyes. And that's what we want to dig into a little bit more right now. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. So, uh, as we've said, we live in Wisconsin and we are kind of known for our uh, cold winters at times. And the particular year that our youngest daughter, Virginia, was born, she is, uh, was born right before Christmas. And that winter, we had one of the coldest winters on record. It was, uh, it was rough. We had a stretch of several weeks where it was below zero, couldn't even go outside. And so here we were, Kim and I, we had three kids under five cooped up in this house, unable to even build a snowman or you'd lose limbs from frostbite. And uh, we were we were desperate. We were in a bad, bad place, just kind of worn out, exhausted. And uh, we would have given anything to be on a, you know, nice beach somewhere where the kids could play in the sand and run and run and run and bye 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 bye. No, that was not in the cards. But um, what we settled for was going out to lunch. That's right, going out to lunch. Anyone who has, say, three kids under five, you know, going out to lunch is no picnic. That's how desperate we were. So it was my job to collect the children and get them ready for public viewing. And I uh, called my son Ben over and I noticed he had a little purple smudge under his nose because he was in the corner smelling markers. Don't judge, he was quiet, okay? And I was gonna do the dad thing, just kinda like, you know, wipe it off. And then Kim notices it, and with a total straight face, she says, why can't parents just draw mustaches on their kids? And she said it as if parents for thousands of years have been asking this very same question. And I, it just blurted out. I said, well, probably because of what other people would think. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, I knew what I had to do. 
I said, Lucy, she's our oldest. I said, give me that purple marker. And she brought it to me and I brought my son Ben in front of me and I knelt down and I drew a purple mustache on my boy and I said, all right, let's go out to lunch. And we did. Now, uh, I did have this moment where I was a little freaking out. You know, sometimes we have good good ideas in our living room and then we go to be in public and we're like, are, are we really doing this? Is this really a smart thing? And I wasn't sure if we should <laughs> move forward on this. Uh, maybe my parenthood card would be taken away. But everyone that we encountered at the restaurant, the waiter, the waitresses, the, the hosts, the diners, uh, everyone that saw Ben, they lit up and they smiled. Um, not, not just not just us. I mean, we were having a blast because he's three-ish at the time, didn't even really know what I had done. So he's busy eating his chocolate chip pancakes, playing with the Star Wars guys, acting all serious. It was a hoot. And I learned two important lessons that day. The first one is if you are a parent and you are not regularly drawing on your children, you are missing out, my friend. Now, I recommend Crayola, but if you want to do Sharpie, you do you, okay? But probably the more important rule or lesson that I learned is that, you know, sometimes we can feel powerless. We can feel like out of control. We can feel like things are coming at us and we have no, uh, nothing we can do to stop it or help it, right? And it's easy to want to throw up your hands, kind of feel paralyzed, do nothing, and say, well, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about this. But I want to remind you of something that, yeah, there are certain things that none of us can control. But that doesn't mean we don't have anything we can control. We can always control our attitude. We can control how we react to other people. We can we can control how we decide to see things. And this one little example of us being all frustrated and having a difficult time as a family, we, we just made a choice to do something a little silly. And not only did it brighten our day, but lo and behold, it brightened the day of all these other people around us. That's what shining on looks like. That's what shining on is, is when you're in a dark place or someone you know is in a dark place and to bring some light to the situation, to bring some joy, some humor, a kind word, something like that. Now, what was kind of interesting is that we uh, ended up taking that and it sort of rippled out. So we, uh, we ended up going on a book tour to promote one of my books. And one of the things we did at the stops that we went is we set up interactive stations and invited parents to draw on their children. And they did. They loved it. They had fun. The kids had fun. It was a blast. And so here again, another example of one little decision made by one frustrated, overwhelmed little family ripples on and on and on. And that's the power of seeing with new eyes. That's the power of deciding to shine on. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's it's little things like that. It's just being tired, exhausted in a difficult time. But sometimes it can, it can be a little bit more challenging to shine on, but it still can be done. A number of years ago, I was speaking in Minneapolis and I got off stage and there was a, a call from my wife and she said that my dad had called and was calling for an emergency family meeting for the very next day. Now the very next day was the only day that I was going to be home over the course of a week. And so it was kind of like gold, I was doing a lot of traveling. And my dad has a little bit of a history of making bigger deals out of things than they actually are. So I called him up and I said, hey dad, um, I got your message. Is this something that we have to do tomorrow? Could we maybe wait a week or could we maybe just talk about it on the phone? And he said, no, I, I really don't want to wait on this. And I really don't want to talk about this on the phone. I'd really appreciate it if you could be there tomorrow. Okay, well, I could tell it was pretty serious, but of course he didn't say what it was about. And now I have 24 hours to imagine worst case scenarios. And so I get to my younger brother's house. I have two younger brothers. We were all married. We get there before my parents were exchanging notes, trying to figure out what this is about. We didn't even know if it was about mom or dad, nothing. Well, finally, it feel like, felt like a million years later, my parents drove up and out of the, out of the passenger seat where my mom was sitting, it, it, I could tell something was off. It looked like she was wearing a, uh, a, a white sweatshirt with the hood pulled over her head. Now, younger people often wear hoodies, but at least for my 60-year-old mother, not so much. So I was already panicked. I'm like, oh my gosh, something's wrong with mom. This is not good. And uh, so she gets out of the car and I realize, oh, 
She's not wearing a hoodie, silly me. She is wearing a beekeeper costume. You know, the like, big white thing with the big net thing over her head. I'm like, what the heck? Then my dad gets out of the car. He's dressed head to toe like a bee. Like, what? what are you supposed to say in a situation like this, right? They got out of the car. They seem to be in good spirits. We give each other hugs and... Like, what's, what's this about? Well, finally, my dad pulls out a cardboard box and puts it on the coffee table. It's sort of like a makeshift podium, right? And there's a homemade sign that he has taped to it. And there's a smiley face on it and a frowny face on it. And the frowny face is crossed out and underneath it says, stuff happens. And then he launches into a speech. And he starts talking about all of these challenges we've encountered as a family and how we've overcome them all. And as he's going through this family history, we're at the edge of our seat saying, would you get to the point, man? And finally, this man who is dressed as a bee, my father, says, I went to the doctor a few weeks ago and they found something. It's cancer. And with that, it felt like all of the oxygen sucked out of the room. And he kept talking. He said, it's, uh, it's prostate cancer. They caught it early. The prognosis is actually very good, and they have we already have a date scheduled for surgery. And with that, slowly, hope started to return, and it was that moment that it occurred to me that I bet no one in the history of ever has told their family that they have cancer while dressed as a bee. And that's exactly what my dad did with his beekeeper friend. Now, the story here, uh, this was October and they were at a Halloween costume party, and these were the costumes that they wore the night before. And they said, we thought we'd wear them again today to, I quote, help take the sting out of the news. Can't make this stuff up, you guys. Uh, so, yeah, so they, they turns out they had to uh, drive up from Illinois to Wisconsin, where we live, two-hour drive, stopped for gas along the way, stopped at a drive through for lunch. Like, why do we not have pictures of that? I'd like to know. Well, I was very inspired by this whole event, and so I created a painting for my dad, and it just was a, a little bee, and it said, be optimistic. And it was really more of a tribute than encouragement, because he was the one who was encouraging us. Well, he really liked this, and he asked me if I'd be able to turn this artwork into a pin, like a, a button that you wear. And, and so, yeah, I did. And so I made this little button, and he's since purchased hundreds of these things, and he gives them out to people now. Uh, if he sees someone uh, at the grocery store or the post office and gets brought up that they had cancer, he gives it to them. If they know someone who has cancer, he gives it to them. If they watched a movie last night with someone that had cancer in it, he gives it to them. Basically, the rule is if they see it and mention it, he takes it off his shirt and gives it to them and tells them the story. Now, uh, it's interesting. He's sort of like the guy at a marathon handing out water, you know, to the people that are running by. And I think that kind of makes sense because... Um, I got to believe that probably if you're watching right now, you know someone who has cancer. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was a loved one. Maybe it was a friend. And you know that no matter what, it is a marathon. It is is no joke. And you need all the faith and hope and love that you can get. And this is his one little way of doing that. And that's that's what shining on looks like too, is being able to like say, hey, here's a little encouragement for you today. Looks like you might need it. That's what we're all called to do. And I think that the biggest lesson of all that my dad gave us and that now I'm sharing with you is that, you know, we can't control what happens to us in life. Sometimes these storms come out of nowhere. They blindside us. They destroy everything in, in the, its path. But what we can't control is how we react to it. And that's the example that my dad gave um, that I will never forget. I know our family will never forget. And I hope it's something that you you uh, needed to be reminded of as well. I just keep wanting that picture of them going through the drive-through with their B and B keeper costume. I know, it had like the little uh, little <laughs> antennas on it, and I just imagine like little wiggling. Oh, I I'm, love that. Story. I'm sure that uh, the people at the drive-through still talk about it that, that, <laughs> that day. That the, that what the, was with that? What was the story? That the B that? came and ordered a cheeseburger. <laughs> what was that about? Uh, so yeah, so hopefully that's encouraging to you. Um, but we need to we need to keep things moving, don't yes, we, Kim? So yes. um, let us uh, actually we're gonna do something a little bit fun, right? We're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna draw. 
And so this is a chance for you. If your kids are nearby, I want you to grab something to draw with and something to draw on. If you got crayons or markers or whatever, that's awesome. Uh, but even if you only have a ballpoint pen and the back of an envelope, uh, it is time. Let's draw. All right, you guys, so this is a, a, a segment that we do on our weekly show. We actually do a live show on Facebook uh, every Wednesday night mm -hmm. uh, at Escape Adulthood, if you check that out. And uh, one of the favorite segments people oh, yes. have is this one right here. Let's draw. It's kind of like, do you remember Bob Ross with the big hair on PBS? It's like Bob Ross meets Willy Wonka because you're always taking us step by step, but it's something a little whimsical. Yeah, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going we're gonna to just take it step by step, follow along. And what I love about this one is there's a lot of room for creativity, all right? But we get to start with a very some some basic lines here. So at the bottom of your paper, you're going to draw kind of like a, a half circle here. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just uh, just a, you know, a little half half circle. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a series of lines um, starting from the top and coming on down and just you know you want to start in the corner you can do that bring it down just like this again you don't have to do anything um, any, anything specific just kind of drawing some lines here all right so that's a good that's kind a good, relaxing. good start yeah. a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want too many but you know just whatever, whatever's up to you. Yeah. You have some fun with it. Now, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw some um, some some other lines that kind of um, connect some of the lines. And we're gonna do these at random, all right? So you're gonna see me just draw lines in here at certain places and yours can be similar. You can put a couple like right next to each other. You can make them skinny if you want. <laughs> they're probably figuring out what this is by now you think so i think, think so, so. i think so especially with the picture behind us right <laughs> it's probably a good <laughs> some smart people here all right so yeah we're making like a stained glass window sun here mm -hmm. okay now uh this is sort of kind of a fun part is that i always like to draw a little smiley face because it's a happy sun it is part of your signature it's a style good, little isn't uh, it? couple little dots for eyes mm -hmm. and a little smile uh, just like that <laughs> i love how the smiles are always inside the eyes yeah this yeah it's it very kind of makes it cute right it does, yeah. all right now here's where the creativity comes in because now i'm gonna color in the little uh i guess they call these facets Oh, right. really? the, little, uh, the little pieces of glass in hmm. between um, and what I what I like to do is kind of draw or color in similar to the painting behind me um, these ones closest to the Sun I do them kind of like orangey and yellow hmm. like this um, but if you want to do you know rainbow colors or your can, favorite basically colors you just made a coloring sheet Right? Yes, you did. You made your own. Which, by the way, is sheet. an amazing parent hack because how many times are you sitting in the doctor's office or in some sort of situation and on the bus or whatever it is, and you're like, oh no, my kid needs a distraction and we have nothing. <laughs> if you have a pen and a piece of paper, you can make a coloring sheet. Even Absolutely. If, right? They're just and coloring it in with pen. Probably should mention that we also have. Um, you know that little texting thing we told you earlier about texting escape? Oh, yeah. um, that If you do that, you get signed up to be on our, our mailing list, our email list. It's totally free. And when you do that, you get access to the Adult Itis Fighter Arsenal, don't yes. you, Kim? And the, yes. So in the bottom of each little email that we send out on Sunday mornings, there's a link to the Arsenal um, which is an online password protected section of our site that has coloring sheets just like this, um, ones that you can print off. Um, it has ebooks about fun things that families can do, all sorts of stuff, uh, yeah. artwork to share. So definitely check that out. It's a lot of fun. So as I finish up here, I'm just going to color in then some Looking of these good. with some different blues. So here's my, you know, little sky. Okay. And again, what's kind of fun is you color what colors you want. You mm -hmm. can, um, you know, if you were to make a little uh, 
like Kim said, a black and white drawing and then make photocopies of it. And then you just go crazy with right? doing different versions of it. Yes. Um, oh, purple. Some purple in here. That's fun. And now, what, if you really want, if you want to have like a little message to it, which I think we might as well, <laughs> is uh, you could write some words in here too, which is kind of fun. So right now I'm going to do a little encouraging word. It just mm -hmm. says shine on. Nice. So there you go. Oh, one more thing. A little, little extra fun here. I like to put a little, little rosy cheeks on this, mm. the sun. Ah, it's like blushing. Yeah, this yeah. makes it a little bit. Cute. By the way, if you enjoyed <laughs> this, check out our YouTube channel, Escape Adulthood. Right now, there are like fifty-four or fifty-six or something segments of Let's Draw, and there's a playlist called Let's Draw. So if this is something fun that you can share with your your kiddos. Um, have fun doing that. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's move on. We are running short of time, but uh, not before we uh, jam even more ideas, like real practical fun things. Let's give them five, five. ideas. We're going five. Going five right, right. now. All right, this first one is one of my favorites. It's called Hide Marty. So what it is, is you just find a little mascot for your household, and it could be a stuffed animal, an action figure, old toy from childhood. Give it a name if it doesn't already have an obvious one. Our little guy here is Marty. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna play hide and seek on each other with that little friend. And it really is as simple as that, you guys. So in the morning, I'm making breakfast, and I know Jason's gonna have a bowl of Fruit Loops because he loves his sugar cereal. Might be Cap'n Crunch or <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch Lucky or Charms. Twix or Lucky Charms or Golden Grand. So whichever or... one I think he's going to take, <laughs> I will drop it in the box, and as he's pouring out the cereal, remember when there used to be amazing prizes in cereal? You can kind of recreate that moment for you know that the people in your house. Boom, there's Marty, right? It's a blast. It's, a, it's, it's a way to kind of play hide and seek with your whole family. I'll take it because then whoever finds it, it's their turn to hide it. And so then he goes missing for a couple of days until Kim takes a shower and reaches for the shampoo bottle. And boom, there's Marty again. Are you, take, are you saying I don't take a shower often enough? Uh, every couple of days. <laughs> every, once, once a month, she's in there. <laughs> So honestly, you guys, this is really simple, simple, awesome fun. You already have a mascot in your house. I know you do. Just have some fun with that one. Absolutely. All this. right. <laughs> Here's another one that's a lot of fun. Uh, this is called Doodle Smile. And the premise of this one is to just draw something silly or funny or inspiring and leave it in an unexpected place for someone to find. Uh, now, in this case, one of the, one time I was on a plane and uh, you know they sometimes they have these uh, these motion discomfort sometimes? bags. Sometimes I hope they're always well, there. <laughs> I guess I don't always <laughs> double check uh, the puke bag, as it were, for people who feel motion discomfort. Gross. <laughs> and uh, I was reminded of the movie Wayne's World. Some of you may be uh, may we're dating ourselves a little bit. They're probably much younger than us. <laughs> if you've never seen it, there is a uh, scene in which uh, these two buddies are picking up another friend, and that friend has had a little bit too much to drink, and he's. Garth is played by Dana Carvey. He has a little concern that maybe this isn't going to go so well in the back of his car. So he gives him a little tiny paper cup. And he says, if you have to spew, <laughs> spew in this. And so I drew that on this this puke bag and drew a little picture of Garth. And I tucked that back in the seat back pocket. You're getting and, uh, a good illustration of this this guy right I here. Have problems. <laughs> I have issues. But I like to think, of course, I have no idea who came there after me to sit there. But I, I like to think maybe they were having a bad day. And maybe this was a way for them to uh, to be bright, and they were unexpected to see a little <laughs> little drawing like this. And that's the point. Now, here's the thing: those little drawings you just yes. did, if you write "shine on" on there and just leave that for someone, that you're, you've already got something that you can can leave behind, just to surprise someone, to get them thinking, maybe uh, make them smile. And then, again, that's how you shine on. I, when growing up, I used to witness my dad leaving notes for my mom on the kitchen counter because he left for work really early as an electrician. He had to get on the road by like 5 a.m. to beat the traffic. Mm -hmm. And so I'd see little, and his handwriting was terrible. It was always in a Sharpie. It was like, 
I love you, Joyce, with like a little heart. Um, and that made a difference to me as a child to see them, you know, communicating in such a positive way. Um, so, you know, it's kind of neat to think of how the, these little choices you make in your household, how your kids are watching you and how that's something that impacts them. I think that's why I'm an encourager today. Because I'm like, that's important. That that helps make life better. Well, and I think that reminds me, you know, this uh, this parenting job is no joke. It is, uh, it's a jungle out there. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I think is often overlooked that's really powerful that parents can do, as well as teachers or anyone that has children in their lives, is to notice something they're good at and tell them. And it might be something, you know, a a physical attribute, you know, like, uh, you know, athletics or or something like that. But a lot of times just like, you know, you're really funny. You make me laugh or you're very kind. You're very thoughtful. Um, You're really good at at being a leader. Uh, You're very persistent. Whatever it is, when you see a kid doing something well, notice it and tell them Uh, that goes a long way because you see you could probably relate like. The things that we're naturally good at, we kind of take for granted because we think everyone's probably good at it because it comes easy to us. And so we don't often think to tell people what they're good at because we assume they already know. Um, But that is a real uh, important way to help our kids and the people in our lives feel seen, which is something that I think we all need more of uh, now than ever. I've been doing that with our youngest, who's seven. She has a huge heart. She's super thoughtful kind of little girl. But... um, she, I've been telling her she's really good at loving me because, ever, you know, maybe you have a kid like that. They're just really good at loving you. Tell them that. Like, you should see her puff up when I tell her, you're so good at loving me. Thank you. And your heart is so beautiful. You know, those little mm-hmm. things, she's just like, oh, I'm good at something that is important to me. Like, that's a huge, huge gift. So yeah. we're a little diversion here. But yeah, anyway, we'll keep going. Back to you, the <laughs> tips for adding more awesome to your life, although those will add more I awesome know. to your life. Right. Uh, but oh, let, you this, is a, this is an easy one. And if you're not doing this, why not? I yes. don't know. The kitchen dance party is seriously one of our favorite things in the world, especially to break up the, the times in your week where you're just kind of feeling a little sludgy as a family, as a household. So all it takes is putting on a little music, your favorite music, the music you want to share with your kids anyway, right? The, your favorite songs from your own childhood mm-hmm. or teenage years. Um, and so this turns dishes into dancing and literally the kitchen floor becomes a dance floor. Um, they are dancing. They're okay, you guys. <laughs> Don't be concerned. They're... <laughs> This is, this is when an earthquake happened. But, you know, whoever's in charge of all the chores in the kitchen, you know, it's it, it's never ending, right? As soon as you get the kitchen cleaned up for one meal, everybody's like, what's for lunch? You know, and you're like, ah! So this is just a little lighthearted choice that you can make to bring a little excitement to the household. Absolutely. And we're going to keep things in the kitchen here. Oh, uh, yes. And go to barbarian spaghetti. Now, we could uh, we could explain this, but it's a lot better if we show you. Let's show you. Who's in? Who's in on are that in? one? Are you in or are you like, no way, not never, uh, goodbye? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, I know some of you are going to be excited about this. Some of you get the vision and you know, you know the power of that 99 cent plastic tablecloth that you saw at the end. That's cents. what makes the cleanup a breeze. And right? some of you parents of toddlers are like, this is dinner every night. <laughs> What is so fun about this? I have to clean up the floor. But if you combine it with bath night and you get the tablecloth, you not only did you just become parent of the year, 
let's be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now your cleanup is even easier and you have more time to relax. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, one more for you. This one is one of our favorites it's called Sticky Cup. Oh, Basically get an empty cup from a fast food place or a coffee shop <laughs> and, uh, and just go for a drive. Just go for a drive with all of your people in the car. And uh, I'm telling you, there, there's a, this is an unexpected joy. Because a lot of people will not even notice, but the people who do, you just created a national emergency. Yeah. They're 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 willing to drive hundreds of miles <laughs> out of their way, even though they were just going to go to the grocery store to tell you that you have Taco Bell on your car. They're freaking out, and you and the people in your car, you're just like, act natural. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal, right? Uh, it's 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 a hoot. Now, eventually, you'll probably get to a stoplight where they pull up next to you, and they're blaring the horn and. Pointing, it's kind of awkward to keep ignoring them. So what do you do, Kim? Yeah, you just stare straight ahead. Do not look over and you're just giggling. I mean, honestly, this talk about, we used to play a game called Make Me Laugh as kids where you're trying to get a, this is basically that. You're just trying to stay straight faced and serious, which is very hard to do. Yeah, and eventually if it's kind of hard to just be awkward to keep ignoring them, just kind of turn and smile and just keep driving. Just keep driving. There's no cheaper or easier fun way to have fun in any economy than sticky We cup. literally used a solo cup and masking tape, what, two weeks ago? We mm -hmm. went for a little drive around town. People were flagging us down. There was a group of people on their front porch who were like, you gotta come on your car. Uh, a motorcycle took a picture of us. Like yeah, a motorcycle was, dude. It was, it was so a blast. And then when you get guys. the people and you just kind of like point and you just go like this. And, and then, then they're like, then they what? Get it you're and doing like, this on purpose? It's awesome. It's so awesome. great. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, one of the things we want to do before we get out of here is we wanted to offer you a little bit of a gift. So yes. right before that uh, crazy pandemic, uh, I wrote a book called A Chance of Awesome. And it turned out that it was kind of the perfect book, not only to get through the pandemic, but to do exactly what we've been encouraging you to do, which is to shine on and to see with new eyes, to ask that question, now that this has happened, what does this make possible? And so we have a an, an ebook uh, download. Uh, it's the full book full color, filled with uh, my artwork um, and the little stories. Yeah, uh, It's got the story about my dad in there, the cancer the story. story. And, uh, yep. So what? What? Uh, all you have to do, uh, like I said, it's totally free. All you have to do is just go to escapeatallhood.com slash chance and enter your email and you'll be able to download it right away. And um, I ho hope it's uh, useful to you. I hope uh, it's something that brings a little bit more light into your day and, and helps you along with this concept because it's a it's a tricky thing yeah. seeing with new eyes and getting ourselves to get out of our, our old ways of doing things, our old habits. The fact that you're here towards the end of our program and you've watched, you know, who knows how many times you pause, who cares? You're, so, you're here at the end of our program. Tells me that you're ready for this next step. Um, and this book will help get you there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just about it for us. Uh, this was a painting that I did uh, right when the lockdown happened. And uh, it was a reminder to me that even though we were going through a dark time, that there's still light to be seen. And sometimes that light is, is sunsets and sunrises and big giant sun in the sky. But sometimes it's just little tiny little fireflies that our eyes are drawn to and that give us hope. And like Kim said, the fact that you are, are here uh, and has have watched this gives me a lot of hope for you and your future and your children's future. And uh, I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Uh, I've always been encouraged by Mr. Rogers, who said when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And um, I think that's an opportunity that we all have every day is to look around us and see who needs help. And the important thing is, as we sometimes forget, is that our kids are watching us. They're watching us. And, and, and uh, I, know, I know kids and I know I love superheroes. I'm a huge superhero nerd. I love watching all the movies. Um, and I think sometimes we forget that as parents, because we know that we don't always have it all figured out, that our kids are looking to us as heroes. Um, and no, we might not be wearing capes or spandex. <laughs> Uh, or be as, as buff as <laughs> Superman is. But we still have that opportunity to be heroes. And how do we do that? Well, one first step was you being here, trying to learn how to be a better parent and create a better life for your family. But a lot of times it's just looking around, seeing who needs help, and trying to shine 
your light to others. So we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to be with you today. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been an encouragement. Uh, shine on you guys. And uh, yeah, it's been a blast. Yes, we are honored that you took this time to be here. It says a lot about you as a parent. Um, so shine on, spread whimsy, and keep being awesome. Bye, guys. Bye.